So when Kixan spoke with the governor yesterday, he explained that he's not bluffing, that he fully intends to start bringing in state resources into Austin come November 1st if Austin does not reverse the changes that the city made to its ordinances related to camping, sitting, and lying in most public areas. What do you think about that? I think it's really good that the governor is, is, is now focused on, on homelessness. Uh, certainly, Austin has a challenge. Uh, it's not as great as the challenge in cities like Dallas, uh, but, but it's significant. And, and the fact that the governor now is focusing on homelessness in cities in the state, I think, is a, is a good thing. Uh, certainly, there are state resources that would be really important uh, for cities like Austin to, to, to be able to take advantage of, as this is a challenge that's really bigger than cities, and it doesn't stop at cities. It's a statewide, in fact, it's a federal challenge. So I think that that's a really good thing to, to, to do. And when I read the, 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 the transcript of what the governor said, uh, it's obvious he has a concern about safety and public health, uh, as, we, as we all do. Uh, I think the community and the governor and his office need to watch the briefings that are going to take place here publicly today uh, at the work session and Thursday at the council meeting so that uh, everybody has the, the same data uh, to be able to talk about what's actually happening on the ground. Uh, we have a safe city. Uh, and, and we don't have a public safety crisis, we don't have a public health crisis, uh, and we'll go through that information and data. Uh, what's happened is we have people who used to be under a bridge in sleeping bags and no one saw them are now in tents and people see them, and we have people that are coming out of the woods in the dark places uh, and now are in more, more public places. Uh, and I understand that that's disconcerting. Uh, to, to people to see the poverty that exists in our city. Uh, we don't have feces all over the place. We don't have needles all over the place. But I will tell you, people that are not living in the homes go to the bathroom somewhere. Uh, and, and that's not happening any more today than it was happening um, uh, six months ago. We actually have to take people off the street and put them into homes if we want to have people not defecating uh, out, outside. And that remains the, the goal of the city. It doesn't do us any good to take people that we now see in overpasses and send them off to the woods near our creeks and our rivers, or to send them into alleys, the ends of dark alleys. Um, they're still not in homes. They're still defecating. They're still doing all the things that they, that they do. We just don't see it anymore. Uh, and, and that's not the right answer. You know, there was an article in Texas Monthly that just came out, uh, and it is consistent with the dozen of, of women that have come up to me to, to say, please thank the city for what it has done for my life. These are women that are experiencing homelessness, that are in the dark, hidden places, in the woods, near our rivers and streams. Uh, that had come to accept being assaulted as just part of their lives uh, and had made some kind of horrible peace with that, uh, but are now uh, out of that place or in a place where they are seen more by the public. They feel like they're more with the rest of the community. They feel like if something happened to them and they cried for help, somebody would actually hear them. And they're saying that they're not getting assaulted anymore. Well, when I look at that community, I want to help her. I want to help people like her. And, and I, I don't have it within me just to send her back to the woods, to the conditions that she used to deal with. Our community can do better than that. You know, the governor uh, spoke about being in Dallas. He said he didn't see anyone that was experiencing homelessness in Dallas. Um, uh, I, we know. Uh, that uh, unfortunately, that's, that's, that it's not true that there aren't people experiencing homelessness in Dallas. The, Dallas has more people experiencing homelessness per thousand people in their population than, than Austin has. Our homeless count went up by about 5% last year. I think Dallas went up by 9% last year. I'm not picking on Dallas because cities across the state and across the country are dealing with this challenge. Uh, it is true that, that in Austin we're seeing it now a little bit more than, than what is being seen, perhaps.
camps in, in Dallas. Uh, but the answer to that is not to hide it. The answer to that is to, is to, to house these folks. I know in the interview yesterday, Governor Abbott said that Austin has more money than they need to solve the problem. What do you think? It's untrue that Austin has more money than it needs to, to solve the challenge of homelessness. Uh, and that would be true virtually of every city in the, in the country. Uh, some are doing better than others, oftentimes uh, in, in proportion to how much resources they have to actually put people into, into homes. Um, if the governor has a plan for our city to be able to house the people that are experiencing homelessness in our city for what, we're, what we have now, I, 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 I welcome and, and plead uh, for that. But we have a lot of people that have been working on this challenge for, for a long time. Uh, we're comparing uh, programs and practices with cities across the country all of the time. Uh, if there was a way for us to, to house everybody in our community with the resources we have now, we would be doing it. Um, we are taking a look from top to bottom to see if we can be more efficient with how we're spending money, if we could focus differently on programs. And that's part of the, uh, the, the, the implementation plan uh, that we're asking the city manager to, to give us, and I'm sure it will be talked about this week. But the suggestion that uh, the, the resources exist today for us to be able to, to, to house everyone in our city is, 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 is not true. Speaking specifically about city funding, the governor and others I've heard recently have cited the amount that the city of Austin allocated in its recent budget to address homelessness, $62.7 million for this recent budget that you guys approved. That amount of money, it, when you divide it per individual, homeless individual, the governor was suggesting that's a lot of money per person. Isn't that enough to address the issue in Austin? We're certainly spending uh, a lot of money now. We need to make sure we're spending it well. But I think what the governor's done is he's taken the total amount of money that's being spent and divided it by the number of people who are homeless on our streets on any given evening. Uh, but a lot of the money that we're spending is to stop people from ending up on our streets uh, uh, experiencing homelessness. So part of the money we spend is on rental subsidies, on, on support, on job training, on, on rapid rehousing to get someone who uh, has had the perfect calamity uh, and is on their own to get them into a place where they can live for two or three months before they, before they write themselves. Over the course of any given year, there are probably about 7,400 people that actually intersect uh, with our um, uh, uh, program, uh, the, that social safety net support that it helps people either become homeless, experiencing homelessness, or uh, might unless we, unless we, unless we intervene. So you have to take a look, not just at the, you can't take the total amount of money we spend and divide it by the people who are homeless in a given meeting. You know, we house a couple thousand people every year. Uh, and, and they don't show up, uh, you know, on the, on the, on the count. Uh, I guarantee the taxpayers of this city that we are uh, constantly reviewing how we spend the money and spending it in important ways. But the conclusions that I've seen on social media that the governor is now adopting, apparently, where he takes the total amount of spending and just divide it by the people that are homeless on any given night, is not really a good way to, to present or to understand uh, how that money is being spent. The governor called specifically for <coughs> reversing the ordinances that the city passed in June related to camping, sitting, and lying in most public places. I know that Chief Manley, as well, has suggested putting a pause on those ordinances at least until a, a larger plan is figured out. What are the prospects in your mind for the city either reversing or pausing those ordinances? In June, <coughs> excuse me, in June, when the council took its action, we said at that time that we were going to maintain our laws against people creating public safety risks. Those people should be taken off the street, arrested or ticketed, public health hazard. They should be arrested or ticketed. But the person who's creating no risks and no hazards, what do you do with them? Those people are now more publicly seen. Uh, <clears throat> I understand that, it's, that it is disconcerting to see poverty. Uh, but those people aren't doing anything 
wrong other than experiencing homelessness. We should be putting those people into housing. We shouldn't be putting them into jails. And now that I have spoken individually with, with a dozen women uh, who thank our city for no longer making them live in dark, quiet, remote places, I, for one, can't send them back to there. We should be helping those people, not hiding them. Uh, so I don't anticipate that the council is going to decide that we should return to hiding people who are not creating risks, not creating hazards, but are just experiencing homelessness. I don't see us doing that. But what I do see the city doing this week is recognizing that, that we have to share public spaces that there is an inclusive way to manage and to share our public spaces. No one gets 100% control of our public spaces 100% of the time for 100% of what they want. So just like we said in June we would do, I think now we're going to do it, but we're going to start saying this is how we share our spaces. I would expect the, the council this week to take action uh, with respect to highly pedestrian trafficked ways where there are lots of conflict with people. You know, there are some parts of town we don't let scooters on the sidewalk. There are ordinances we have in town that, 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 that say that we're not going to have people, you know, jesting around um, uh, entrances to buildings. Uh, and I think we need to, to make clear that those kinds of rules with respect to sharing our spaces are going to be enforced here too. And I think you're going to see those laid out and probably adopted by the council on Thursday. But the reason we do that is because those help keep us safe and they help keep us healthy. I don't expect the council to take an action that's only intended to, to hide from our view uh, the, the, the poverty that exists. That doesn't help anybody. To be clear, you think it's possible that the city could specify some places where there might be further limitations in the future, but you don't see the city doing a total reversal of those ordinances that were passed in June. As we, I, I see us doing that, as we said we would do in June, uh, when we took the initial action. I think those are all my questions for you today. Is there anything else that you want to add or make sure that people hear? No, I, I would just urge everyone to pay real close attention to the information and data that should be coming out this week, and the discussions with uh, city staff and various uh, levels of government so that people can, can get some real information uh, about, about what's, what's happening in our city. And then finally, I just want to say thank you to the community and that I am proud to be part of a community that's dealing with this challenge head on, uh, prioritizing keeping us safe and healthy, uh, but really focusing on housing people who are experiencing homelessness rather than hiding them or jailing them.